In my presentation today, I will be talking about obesity in children and teenagers. As a patient navigator, it is my role to help patients navigate through the complicated healthcare landscape. Patient navigators act as links between the patients and the healthcare providers. They offer guidance and support throughout the healthcare journey. It is very important that a patient navigator finds the easiest solutions for a patient struggling with a certain issue. These jobs may include, but are not limited to, helping with insurance related issues, being a support system for the individual and their family, finding the best doctors, and getting the patient to understand treatment options. They may follow up with patients to ensure that they are going about with their treatment plans and attending necessary appointments. This helps in monitoring the progress of the patient's health and addressing any emerging issues. Connection between the individual and the patient navigator is critical to establishing a good relationship. The navigator must be trustworthy in order to truly get to know the patient so they can establish a plan as to how to help them. The work of patient navigators is extremely necessary for patients facing complex health issues. The individual that I am working with is a 13-year-old female struggling with obesity and is at risk for cardiovascular disease and diabetes. The start of the problem comes from the environment in which the female is living in. She states that all, the, all of her family is overweight. Her diet consists of mostly junk food and fast food. Her and her family do not find much of an issue about her diet. She participates in very little physical activity, which is only negatively impacting her condition. Her parents are also overweight and have a huge influence on what their child is eating. My patient has said that she has also found issues in controlling the amount of food she intakes a day and find herself, finds herself on binges. She has stated that school causes much stress on her and she has turned to food as a coping mechanism. These actions are causing much damage to her health as she is starting to develop issues with her heart and pre-diabetic signs. She has a very high cholesterol and blood pressure for her age. She has also found herself suffering from polyuria and polydipsia, which are both huge warning signs of diabetes. It is my job to find solutions and help this patient understand how her actions are affecting her. Finding her solutions fast is extremely important to help stop the problem as soon as possible. If the problem continues on, the issues that we are already seeing will progressively get worse. There are two main problems with her condition, the patient's diet and the level of physical activity she is participating in. To start with her diet, as stated before, the patient mostly eats fast food and other junk food. The frequency of food intake refers to how many meals or snacks an individual is eating throughout the day. For a 13 year old, it is important that they are eating three well-balanced meals containing all necessary nutrients and having two to three snacks throughout the day. My patient gave an estimate and states that she probably eats two to three meals a day that are usually fast food and spends the rest of the intake of food on snacks. She does not have an exact number, but states that it's somewhere between seven to 10 snacks a day that usually consist of potato chips, candy, or other unhealthy food. The intensity of my patient's diet refers to the amount of calories within these meals. Each fast food meal contains about 600 to 1,000 calories, and each snack, depending on how much is eaten, is probably around 400 to 650 calories. My patient has been eating like this since she could remember. She's not completely sure, but her family states that they themselves have been eating like this for many years. Physical activity is another issue at hand. The frequency of physical activity for teens should be around 60 minutes per day. My patient states that she only participates in physical activity offered at her school in gym class. The intensity of the workout in gym class can be very low to a moderate amount depending on what exactly the class is pertaining to that day. The class itself is 60 minutes, but the duration of physical activity is probably around 30 minutes. She also states that she only has this class two days a week. Generally, physical education classes start in elementary school, so the onset of physical activity is around seven to eight years. When a teen suffers from obesity, there are many problems that can transfer into adulthood. There is a risk of increased chance of chronic diseases. In my patient, we have already seen early signs in the development of two. This problem can also lead to sleep disorders such as sleep apnea. Another issue that we see frequently is many psychological effects. My patient has already stated how school can put much stress on her, so it is important to take this into consideration. Low self-esteem can cause extreme detrimental effects to a person's mental health. It is important as a patient navigator to keep this in mind so I am not worsening the issue. My patient has not shown intense signs of, 
intense signs of depression or anxiety, but the increase in the current behaviors can lead to this. There are many solutions and plans that I will design for my patient. The first and foremost action that I must take is to educate the individual. It is my job to show the patient what exactly is happening and how much of an effect it can have on their body. In this instance, I must explain the risks of the behaviors. Diabetes and cardiovascular disease are two very intense disorders that can have extreme outcomes. My goal is to get the female to understand how the food she eats can lead to these disorders. I will start out by explaining that the increased intake of saturated and trans fats can lead up to a buildup in plaque in the arteries. It can also put an extra strain on heart and blood vessels. Both of these can lead to an increased chance of heart attacks and strokes in the future. High sugar foods can, lead, can cause insulin resistance, which is the main cause of diabetes. Insulin is a hormone that regulates blood sugar. When this hormone is damaged, glucose cannot enter the cells the way it needs to, which impacts blood sugar levels. My goal is not to scare the patient with these facts, but rather inform her as to why change is necessary. I must push the idea that if we change these things as soon as possible, it will help her create positive effects on her body. After educating her, it will be my job to design a meal plan and a physical activity plan for her. For the meal plan, we will start out slow. When working with a patient this young, suffering from obesity, you cannot tell them to only eat fruits and vegetables and cut their calorie intake down tremendously. I will work with her doctors to create this plan to make sure that it fits her needs. In this meal plan, we will start out by cutting down on the amount of fast food that the individual intakes. I will give her and her family easy recipe that consists of well-balanced meals. They will all consist of nutrient-based meals consisting of whole foods and low fat. I will find snack options that can also create this effect too. Some sna snack options may include popcorn, fruits, nuts, yogurt, etc. Another idea that I will address is proportion. Portion control is very important in, in weight loss. I will tell my patient that it is okay to sometimes have these unhealthy foods if we portion them correctly and they are not our only source of energy. I will let her pick a few foods that she would like to keep in her diet and I will explain what proportions will set her up for success. This is important because it is very unlikely that if we completely cut out these foods, then my patient will go along with the plan. This is important because it is very unlikely that if we completely cut out these foods, that my patient is gonna go along with the plan. This is a journey and that needs to be recognized. We are not going to get to step one to step five in two days. It may be over a course of a year or months. This is just the start to get my patient to understand the importance of food and what she should be eating. From there, we can monitor the progress and slowly continue to cut off the amount of unhealthy foods and the amount of calories being consumed. A plan for increase of physical activity is also necessary. As stated before, my patient only participates in physical activity in her school's gym class. It is important that the female is moving for more than just this time. The recommended amount is 60 minutes per day for a teen. I will start with my teen to try and get her motivated to take a 10 minute walk a day. This will help her to jumpstart the idea of physical activity. This time will increase throughout the weeks and we can even start implementing simple workout routines. These routines will start out very light and not intense. My patient can work with me to create these workout plans as she knows her ability. I want to push my patient to complete these goals, but I want to be able to stay within her limits. It is important to respect that as I am creating these goals. Another thing that is important is getting my patient to support groups and individual-based cognitive therapies. I will start out by finding necessary support groups to help her talk to people her age going through the same issues. This will help her find solutions and be able to talk out some of her problems and make connections. If she does not feel comfortable being in a group setting, giving her the option of individual care is also important. As stated before, her condition can lead to many psychological issues. Getting a jump start on her mental health care is quite necessary. This care can also tackle the issue of stress that she is feeling in school. The stress is one of the problems that is causing the overeating. If she is able to talk to a professional or people who are suffering through the same idea, it will help her tremendously. This idea is one of the most important parts of her journey and making sure that she is attending her appointments and engaging is something that I will need to monitor. After giving a patient the necessary resources and helping her start her journey, it is important that I continue to monitor her progress. If there is something that is not working, such as a part of her meal plan, change will have to take place. I will explain to my patient how if something is not working for her, we can adapt and change it to fit her needs. 
Communication during this progress is necessary to get the individual where she needs to be. Overall, this journey may be difficult, but overcoming these obstacles will set her up for success. This concludes my presentation, and I will now do a self-assessment. Personally, I believe that I did represent myself in a professional manner. I think I also represented myself very nicely as a patient navigator. I was able to express what exactly I do to help treat my patients. I also think I explained what I would do to help solve the issue at hand if I were a patient navigator. I also believe that I was able to make the case that change was needed. It was clear that my patient, what my patient's issue was. I also explained what the effects of the problem was. I stated how diabetes and cardiovascular disease work and how much of an impact they can have on the body. I made it extremely clear that there must be a call to action sooner rather than later. I was able to successfully explain what exactly is starting the problem. I was able to state how the issue came from the family and the environment that my patient was living in. I was able to incorporate this into many parts of my presentation, so I do think I su successfully explained the cause of the problem. I also think I discussed FIDO adequately. I went through FIDO with both the aspects of diet and physical activity. I explained each part of the factors in depth to help my audience understand the impacts of the problem. And I do think my solutions were practical and likely to be adopted. I do not think they were very out of the ordinary. I think I catered m towards my patient's needs as I stated how she can work with me to create her meal plans and her workout plans. Overall, I think I structured out my plan very nicely. I think I was able to get my points across in a well-organized manner. I also think I created a well thought out solution. However, I do think there are a few things I could work out, work on. First off is the pace of my presentation. I think I spoke too fast and needed to take some pauses. I also do think I could have created a better timeline as a patient navigator to how everything would be spread out. I found that I was somewhat vague on when it came to that. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you.